All right. Um, now I want to talk about the pipeline update. I'm, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is. The reason I put this in last year and I put it in this year is it's getting to be more and more common with estate planning, dealing with the pipeline. There's been a lot of articles, there's been a lot of court cases, a lot of window files issued on this. So I just really want to give you a quick update as to what it is and then talk about what's changed this year. Um, so I'm going to use an example here. We've got Mr. A. Mr. A has shares of ACO and uh, the shares have a fair market value of a million dollars, a cost basis and paid up capital of a thousand dollars. Mr. A dies, he's got a capital gain on his final return of $999,000, tax of roughly $232,000, I might be a little off on that with, with uh, the new Ontario tax rates, but it's somewhere around there. And uh, now the shares have a cost basis of a million dollars, the paid up capital is still $1,000, and the fair market value is a million dollars. So if Mr. A's estate decided that they were gonna redeem these shares, what would happen is we would have a deemed dividend in the estate, because the deemed dividend is the difference between the redemption proceeds of a million dollars and the paid up capital of $1,000, and then we'd have a capital loss as well, okay? So in effect, we've got double taxation because we had tax on his final return as a capital gain, and we've ta got tax in the estate on the deemed dividend. So there's two ways of dealing with that double tax. One is 164.6 of the Income Tax Act says, if you redeem the shares within one year from the date of death, that capital loss inside the estate, we can carry back and offset the gain, the gain on the final return. So now we've gone from paying tax at roughly 23, 24% on a capital gain on that final return to paying tax at about 33 or 34% on the deemed dividend inside the estate. So we've got a big difference there, a 10% difference in the tax rate, but it still is better than having double tax. So 164.6, is the simple way of dealing with this problem. It's just now we're paying 10% more in tax, but at least we're not paying, you know, 60% tax. We're only paying 40 or 34%. Okay. The pipeline is designed to keep that capital gains tax rate, or it's designed to deal with the situation where you can't get those shares redeemed in the first year for some reason or you didn't know about this rule and you find out later on and now you want to deal with this. So what happens with the pipeline is, again, after death, now the estate has these shares that were worth a million dollars and they've got a cost basis of a million dollars and a paid up capital of a thousand dollars. So if the estate sells those shares, they're not gonna have a capital gain because when they sell them, their cost basis is a million dollars, so they're not gonna have a gain assuming the shares haven't gone up in value, okay? So what we're gonna do is the estate's gonna incorporate a holding company and they're gonna sell those shares to the holding company at fair market value. So now the holding company owes the estate a million dollars uh, for the shares but the Holdco owns the shares and now we could pay a dividend from, Hold, or from Opco up to Holdco and repay that note, okay? 84.2 says that, wait a minute, if, if the only reason you're doing this is to get all of the cash out of ACO and you're gonna wind up ACO right away, we're gonna treat that transfer as a dividend rather than a capital transaction, okay? So, so in that example, 84.2 will recharacterize those proceeds. Instead of being proceeds on the sale of the shares, they're gonna be a deemed dividend, and then you're gonna be back in the same situation you were had you done the 164.6, only you're not gonna have the loss carry back available. So you are going to have double tax. So Revenue Canada has issued a number of window files over the last while, and I'll give you a summary of them at the end of this. But the one issue we had last year when, when I was here is, is I said that CRA has said they won't invoke 84.2, 
as long as ACO is carrying on a business and it continues to carry on that business for at least a year after the transaction. But they never really defined what a business was. So we knew that if, if ACO just had cash and you're getting the cash out and you're winding up the company, we've got a problem. And we knew if ACO was over here carrying on an active business and the active business was going to carry on for a number of years, that we were okay. But in between, we didn't know. And the in between two situations I can think of, one we mentioned earlier, we've got rental properties in the company. Does it have to be an active business? The other is, what if we've got a mortgage portfolio or a bunch of marketable securities or that type of thing? Is that considered a business? So there's been two window files issued this year. Both of them have dates other than 2014, but they're both issued in 2014. The first one says that, that uh, at the top here, the 2013 one, says that where the business of the corporation is holding marketable securities, that's okay. Now, the thing that isn't very clear in this is, is it didn't elaborate on whether you have to treat the gains and losses on the sale of those marketable securities as business income and losses, or whether if you treat it as capital gains and losses, it's still okay. So we're still a little bit uncertain with the marketable securities. This gives us a little bit of information, but just not as much as we would have liked. The second window file, the 2012 one, again, come out in 2014. It says if the income is from property and, and uh, it's not active business income, that's okay. So if we've got rental properties inside the corporation, we're earning rental income, and you're going to carry on that rental business, you're fine. Uh, 84.2 or bracket 2 won't apply to that. So it's given us a little bit more clarity from where we were last year in that we know we're okay on rental properties. We're still a little bit up in the air on the marketable securities, so um, I'd like to get more clarification on that, but at least we're more clear than we were a year ago. The other thing I've put in here, this is exactly from last year, these are the other window files and roundtable documents and all that kind of stuff that have been issued on the pipeline. So if you're into a situation, you're doing a pipeline transaction, you're, you're having to go back and refresh your memory on the rules, you want to start by reading these documents and the two that were on the previous slide. 